Yep, Peter Coles from PFC Mallets. A lot of people continually ask me, why did you make the mallets? So let me tell you a story. Um, two o'clock one morning, I woke up and I said to my wife, I'm going to make a mallet. And she said, go back to sleep. So soon after that, uh, about oh, two weeks later, I'd actually made a mallet and we, uh, we took it down to the club and I played with it. And within about three weeks, I had orders for four of them. So I thought, hmm, here's a go. So let's look at this seriously. So I redesigned it. And when I redesigned it, uh, I called on four, uh, three friends of mine that I was um, involved with in a very nasty place in the late of last part of the 60s. They, there was a big problem there and there was a German percussion engineer and there was an English um, uh, design engineer and there was uh, an American engineer and me. And uh, we sorted out the problem and we became very, very friendly with them. They're, they're lovely people and they've been great friends all our lives. Um, and so when I designed this, um, I sent the design across to Hunts in Germany and he, he being a percussion engineer, and a master's uh, mathematician designed the mallet and altered my design very slightly so that when a ball hits the striking face the shock goes past these holes along the bottom and the top of the mallet and into a percussion chamber here and that redirects the shock back to the striking face and away from the handle. Uh, no one in the world makes a mallet like this. We then sent that across to uh, Michael in England, and he's not only a, um, uh, an engineer, but he's also very in, involved with metallurgy. And he then formulated uh, an alloy, an aluminium alloy. You can't use normal production uh, aluminium because it doesn't transfer shock. So here we've got a mixture of some lovely things that enables us, therefore, to transfer the shock the way we want it to be. Now, there's a couple of things. There's a hole here and there's a lot of holes here. What happens, I've, I buy an enormous amount of uh, what we call blank stock and one solid uh, piece of um, uh, alloy goes into a machine which I own which is a cost of about five hundred and seventy thousand dollars and it has two internal robots at one side of the chamber and two at the other so what the machine does is actually cut this out and then um, it, it cuts out the dovetails uh, and then uh, it, it automatically inserts the pins on either side uh, and then it automatically uh, inserts the dove t the striking faces into the alloy uh, and then it does a brilliant, brilliant thing. It finds the absolute center of gravity of the mallet accurate to within a quarter of a human hair and then it mathematically calculates where these holes must be because every mallet is different. So once it's calculated that, it then produces holes here. Now, most people say these are round. They're not. They're epitrochoids. That's a hole um, uh, drilled over another hole to basically create, exaggeratedly, a figure eight. So uh, as a result of that, now we can redirect the shock this way for this side and this way for that side. And that's how we get the shock down into the percussion chamber. Now, the percussion chamber is something completely different. That's another world. The machine, because it is so sophisticated, does some very special things here and makes this area more dense, which means that it, we can now direct shock. And so the shock comes down, hits here, and then goes back. Now, no one in the world has ever done this. Uh, so that's basically the um, uh, technicality of the alloy. Now let me tell you about the technicality of the striking face. The striking face is a combination of some very, very tricky um, elements. Nylon, silicon. You can't mix nylon and silicon, uh -huh, can't you? Well, we've just found out a way that you can do it with a certain number of temperatures, a certain number of, of pressures, 
um, and, and one or two very special catalysts. We've been able to do some very special things here and produce a striking face which is almost indestructible. When this hits a, a, a hoop, and we please don't hit a hoop if you can help it, what it does is to create a, sl a slight recess and then over a period of time that recess will slowly fill out again never been available anywhere in the world. It doesn't fill out completely, but it certainly creates a, uh, a face which is now almost reliable. Now, one of these, uh, one of these striking faces, uh, because the machine is so accurate, uh, is exactly 90 degrees to the central plane of the mallet, uh, 90 degrees to the central plane. Now that means that I can guarantee this head for 10 years that it will never come off and it will always hit accurately on the part of that we've machined. If you damage it, then obviously we don't, we don't uh, guarantee that part. Now we've also engineered a very, very interesting thing. If you hit the ball in where, where my fingers are going up to here in this quadrant one, two, three quadrants, it will make a noise telling you you haven't hit the ball in the middle of the mallet. If you hit the ball in the middle of the mallet or the top quadrant, it will tell it will be a completely different noise. It's a much more pleasant noise. And if you hit the ball in the middle to the top quadrant, you will give the ball top spin. No other mallet does that. So it's just, it's <laughs> pardon me, technically an, a, a very, very, very advanced mallet. Next, let me tell you about the mallet. The first one we made was this little critter. Now that's a nine and a half inch mallet and that's what we call the club mallet. Then we made the 11 inch competition mallet of the same weight. 2 pounds 14 ounces. If you go into the club and pull out one of your, your, your wooden mallets, they weigh around about 2 pounds 14. Then we had some people that said, hey listen, I've got back problems and I've got arthritis and I'm bending over and I've got all sorts of problems. I want a lighter mallet. And so we made exactly the same mallets in a lighter version. So now, this is only two pounds, five ounces, and all these uh, weights are with a 36 inch handle. I sell an enormous number of these to people who are saying, my mallet's too heavy, have you got something lighter? And the, uh, the big advantage of these mallets is that these lighter ones hit just as far as the heavier ones. Now, talking about hitting, because we have spring alloy and because of the design, a ball needs to be hit 20% less hard with my mallet than any other mallet on the market. So therefore, the softer you hit a ball, the more accurate you are. And when you get around a hoop, this just makes an amazing difference. People say to me, Colsey, you hardly hit that ball, and look, it went into the hoop. And it's only because I just have to basically touch it and it runs beautifully on good grass, of course. So there's, there, there's a, um, the, the lighter version. And in, you're looking at where I'm putting these back. I have stock here always of at least 200 mallets, always about 200, so that I've always got plenty of mallets to suit everybody. Now, you'll notice that these Zellatron striking faces are yellow. Story behind that. When we made this very special Zellatron, there is a, uh, in the center here, there is microscopic uh, bubbles. And we couldn't get those microscopic bubbles in any other Zellatron color but yellow. And it was a bit of a nuisance. So then yellow had to become our signature, <laughs> signature color. However, uh, with the technical advances of some very special chemist friends down in Newcastle, we've been able now to make exactly the same range with a black striking face, Zellatron striking faces. So we have the 11 inch light and heavy. We have the nine and a half inch light and heavy. And then for people who would like to have um, 
a brass face mallet, which are mainly the English and some Australians, and very few Americans, although, although there is one club in America who actually hold the mallet like a golf club and they use it bang and the only mallet that could that could stand that is the brass face. Um, I'll talk to you about that too because I want to talk about the Egyptians later on. Okay so in the brass we have uh, again nine and a half light and heavy and 11 inch light and heavy. So we have something like um, oh, I don't know, 12 different mallets that you can choose from. But then something else happened. Uh, a friend of mine uh, said, Colsey, I want you to weigh this mallet because its weight is perfect. And he was a heavyweight champion in the world. And lo and behold, it was two pounds, 11 ounces. So we made two pounds, 11 ounces, which is slightly different and the only difference is in the middle of the mallet can you see it's a little bit more heavy here and that mallet performs unbelievably well i've gone across to one of these and it is an absolute treat this is the pfc elite the elite mallet uh, two pounds 11 in 11 inches and also in nine and a half inches if you want a, a mallet that is going to give you the best possible performance uh, pretty much against any mallet, there is one, however, I want to talk about, which is also brilliant, um, then this is the one for you. PFC mallets have just been recorded by an English company as one of the two best mallets in the world. History has always used uh, another carbon fiber mallet, which is a brilliant mallet. And we've snuck up right in behind them as being the second best mallet um, as decreed by the, the English. Um, I think give us enough time, we'll, we may nudge them out and we may not. They've got a big uh, hold on the world market. But ours is now slowly more and more and more being used in international competitions. Um, now, I want to talk to you about one other thing. Can you see over here, these are our handles ready to be made. Now, the secret of PFC mallets is that every mallet is Every mallet is made specifically to suit each individual. We ask the following questions. What size mallet would you like? Nine and a half or 11 inches? What weight would you like? Two pounds five, two pounds 11, two pounds 14, and if it's brass, two pounds 14 or three pounds five. We can give you any of those. Then we say, what length handle would you like? Now people come to me and say, oh look, it's got to come up to my waist, it's got to come up to my wristband, it's got to come up to my belly button, and ladies say it's just got to come underneath my boobs. It's all nonsense. The way to determine what is the best length handle for you is to go and play with a club mallet until you find one that you feel absolutely comfortable with and that is the correct length from the ground to the top of the grip that we want to hear. That's terribly important. I say to people, I don't care whose mallet you buy, but I do care that your mallet handle must be the same length as to fit you perfectly. And you will only know that by finding one in the club that suits you perfectly. Then we ask another question, would you like a round grip or would you like an ovoid grip? Grips. Our grips were designed by an American orthopedic surgeon. We uh, sent a mallet across to him and he sent me back uh, a design and he said, Peter, can you make these? Well, we sent them straight away to him. Um, and he came back and he said, that is just about as ideal as you can get now. There's round that gives you no sense of direction, or there is ovoid that gives you a good sense of direction. Now, we make mall uh, mallet grips uh, in all sorts of sizes because people have all different uh, 
shapes and sizes of hands. So we make little ones for ladies, medium ones for most people, and big ones, big thick grips for men with bigger hands. And when we send them across, we invariably get a message back saying, Pete, thanks for the grip. It's fabulous. Now, finally, I just want to talk to you about the future. Where's the future in mallets? You know, there are some brilliant wooden mallets. There's a beautiful mallet made in Spain. Um, there's a, uh, some lovely mallets made in, in for a lower price uh, in New Zealand for the beginners. Um, and there is some absolute, there is one absolutely, one absolutely superb carbon fiber mallet made in England. Um, so what's the future? Do you know, I think the future is simple. There will always be a market for the cheapies, which we're not interested in. There will always be a market for the absolute top of the range. Um, there is a little bit of a, a delay with that fellow. If you order one, you're lucky if you get it in six to eight months. Uh, where number two, if you order one today and the money comes into our account, it will leave here in three days, anywhere in the world. Now. To le now that leads to how do we get things overseas? We send things from Australia, mallets from Australia, in uh, via Australia Post International Express. America currently about seven days, England about six days, Spain about eight days, New Zealand about eight days. Um, uh, Latvia about nine days, France about nine days, um, Italy about nine days, uh, and Egypt oh about eleven days because it, I think it has to go to England and then it comes back. Would have gone. So we've developed this so that we've got just what we consider to be the absolutely perfect amount of flex. We also have a travel handle, they unscrew. And today I sent a bench shaft um, mallet to America and I've sent the double bench shaft to America as well. Uh, if you need them, we'll make them. Um, but it is, we certainly don't make a, very many of them. Uh, and I, you know, I think that's about it, except to say, if you need, if you'd like to just pan over here, you can see all the different color grips that you've got, that we've got. We have some blue uh, rolls in 25 meters. We have black in 25 meters. We normally have 20 and there's a box here, which I'll bang, uh, containing another, another 10. So we go through those terribly, terribly quickly. They are available, they're inexpensive. Just ring me or send me uh, an email to px calls at gmail.com and I will send them to you. I send these off at a reasonable price, 20 bucks. And they are the ones that we uh, have imported uh, because it's the only grip we can find that doesn't deteriorate quickly with hand acid or hand cream, particularly in this hot weather with people putting on goodness knows what on their hands. So we back up our all our products uh, with um, so, uh, lots of available stock. Uh, we have in 10 years of manufacture, I just looked at the order, we're up to order number 6,120. Now that's not all mallets, a lot of that would be handles or it would be grips or, or it would be any other bits and pieces. So, so people say, how many have you made? Currently, we send out about one and a half, two and a half mallets a day, seven days a week. And that just keeps going. You know, we might have a, a three or four days of no orders, then it floods in. So today, I sent three to America and three into Australia. Tomorrow, uh, I've got orders for two to send off. So it's not as good as it could be. Okay, so if you have any questions, please just send me a message to PX Coles. That's Peter X-Ray Coles at 
gmail.com and we will get back to you as quickly as we possibly can. If it takes any more than 24 hours, I'd be absolutely surprised.